So the question is, how do you build followers? You build followers by putting out content. So it's just catches, catch, catch. Yes, okay. and it doesn't have to be your own content. It can be you can repurpose and share other people's content. Okay, but now here's the thing. Here's the big thing, which I'm going to talk about. It's not about really posting. It's about listening, and I'm going to talk about that. Good listeners get followers. You need permission to. to you just said that you use other people's. Typically not. Because a lot of other people have branded their stuff. Give them credit. Mm -hmm. Don't try to make it as your own. Say, hey, I just got this from xyz.com. I thought I'd share this with you today. Then you're giving credit. You're putting the footnote, you're giving credit, and you can reshare it. So even on your blog, on Twitter, that's what a retweet is. You're just retweeting. Tumblr, the blog, you're just re-tumbling. You're tumbling other people's information. So you're just sharing it. That's, that's what this whole super, um, information highway is that we call the web, right? It's a ton of information. How much really new content's out there? I mean, yeah, okay, so a new study gets done, a new product might get done, but really, it's one scientific study that's being done on, on eating rock powder, and then everybody's gonna post their version of eating rock powder, right? It's the same content. It's just being repurposed and reworked and so. So it's never about selling your product. This is super important. People don't wanna be sold, but they love to buy. That's on my mission statement at the restaurant. My staff, it's reinforced for them. People hate to be sold, but they love to buy. Don't bombard them with cheesy sale items with your product, with why your product's so good and this and that. It's it gets tiresome for a lot of people. You don't go to a restaurant to sit there and drink water. What is the number one key to having success on social media? Be all ears, no hard sell, or quit now. Listen, listen, listen. Be all ears. So one of my Instagram tactics right now is we're located by Sam's Point Preserve, Minnewaska Preserve, and Mohonk Preserve. I have three, we have three preserves on the mountain there in Ellenville. We have Honor Haven Hotel, which is the former Falls View. We have a Lippman Park, which is for mountain biking. So I go on to Instagram. I put in the hashtag, the hashtag is a keyword, hashtag, the pound sign, Minnewaska, hashtag Sam's Point. Or in Instagram, I can look at the exact location so if you're at Sam's Point hiking at 10 o'clock in the morning and you're at a beautiful waterfall, you're going to whip out your camera, you're going to post an Instagram photo, right? It's me and Jim, it's me and Joe, it's me and Alice here at the waterfall. Post it, that picture is tagged of the location. I can, you can see where you're at these on these locations. These pictures are tagged, they can put a location or they can hashtag it. So I go online and I say, who's at Minnewaska today? Who's at Sam's Point today? Put in this, the proper search stuff, the hashtag or the location. Oh, there's Jim and Alice. I don't know Jim and Alice, but Jim and Alice are having a great time four miles from my restaurant at a beautiful waterfall on the mountain. Like. They're gonna be hungry in a few hours. Great picture, the waterfalls look great today. Glad you're enjoying the local trails. Jim and Alice look at their phone and say, Hudson Valley Green Restaurant just liked my photo. Who are they? Where are they? Let's click their profile. Oh, honey, they're four miles down the road. Let's click their link and find their website. What do they have to eat there? We're going to be off the trails here in a little while and we're going to be hungry. I didn't sell a single thing. I listened and I interacted. Every single one of you have people that are buying something in a like business. I'll even go to the local restaurant, to Gabby's, and like people when they're there. They post a picture of their guacamole, and I say, you're right, they make rock great guacamole. These people have to eat again. It's not, it's not one time and done. If they're in town for the weekend, they're, they're, they gotta eat somewhere Sunday. They gotta eat somewhere Saturday if it's Friday night, or if they're here midweek. And other people are like, why would you go on somebody else's and, and like the comp competitors? 
there's competitors anyway. And if I'm not out there in front of people and listening and talking and communicating, they're never gonna find me. They're eating, that's a client. If you have a mouth and you eat, you're a client of mine. And you're only four doors away if you're at Gabby's, four doors. That's it. Okay, so explain what you do. I mean, so you go to Gabby's. On, on, online, right. on, my, on Instagram. So I go right on Instagram. And I can actually give a demo afterwards. So we, we, we've done some time for some Q&A stuff afterwards and I can take my laptop out and we can do this. But you go onto Instagram and you just search a hashtag. You search a keyword, keyword or hashtag or location. And that's it. And you just see what people are posting. Believe it or not, people check into Calicoon. Calicoon's an area. There's a place on Instagram that people can check in or hashtag Calicoon. Now, if I'm a restaurant in Calicoon, I wanna know who's coming here Friday night. I wanna know who's going to Honors Haven in Ellenville on a Friday night because they're checking in. They might not like the food there. So I'm gonna like one of their photos. I'm gonna say, welcome to the area. But your Instagram name has to be catchy enough for them to want to find out more information. Do you need to have Green Hudson Valley Green Restaurant? That's my name, it describes what I do. I'm in the Hudson Valley, I'm a restaurant and I'm green. So you have to have an Instagram handle or any of these other handles that match your business has to be some keywords and a description right in your name. Alice the Cruise Planner. Alice the Cruise Planner is gonna go and see who's checking in at Carnival this weekend in the local port in New York or in Miami or wherever. And Alice the Cruise Planner is gonna start liking people's photos and saying, enjoy your cruise. If you're a jewelry store, well, oh, well, that's a bad example because I already bought the ring, but, but right. If you're engaged and you're having your wedding in a few months. Wedding, a wedding, yeah, wedding. Well, you're going on a honeymoon, aren't you? Going on a honeymoon. Yeah, so you have to figure out who your target audience is and then gently listen to them, communicate to them. Don't sell them because they know what Alice the Cruise Planner does if that's in her name of her Instagram handle. They know what she does. But Alice oh. just posted a picture of going to the Caribbean. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Maybe I want to go there for my honeymoon. Oh wow, that picture looks great. You know what? That Hudson Valley Green Restaurant. Oh, that looks delicious. I love tuna. I love hummus. I love asparagus. Whatever it might be, because then they're going to start scrolling through your pictures on Instagram and say, wow, I should have gone there. Oh, look at that beer. Oh my gosh, I love Keegan Ale beer. <coughs> so if you look at my Instagram account, I only. I have about 225 followers, and I follow about 125, 150. So again, it's not about having massive numbers. It's about having the interaction with people. My Twitter account, I have 25,000 followers, and I follow like 3,000 people. But I don't think most of them are really quality people on Twitter. I have much more quality people with 225 on Instagram than I do with 25,000 on Twitter.